The theme, Dairy is a Future, is about recognising and embracing the bright future we have as a dairy industry. This past year, the dairy industry has rallied behind a clear objective to ensure that every Australian dairy farmer has the capability, the tools, support and support to fully understand their individual business operations and to make decisions about their future based on sound evidence. As you've already heard, there's no doubt the industry's been under a lot of pressure, very intense pressure over the last 12 months or last nine months. We are also an industry that has the know-how and the resilience to overcome adversity and thrive for the long term. Uh, farmers and processors have a long history of working together to achieve outcomes in this industry and we wouldn't have achieved what we have over the last 30 odd years without that strong partnership. Over the last few years and particularly the last, I think, 12 months, that partnership has, um, has been uh, severely uh, questioned at times. There's no doubt that farmers, as a result of what happened last April, May, have lost enormous confidence in the, farm, in the processes with whom they, who they supply. Uh, they've lost confidence in uh, the management and they've lost confidence in some of their uh, directors, particularly of the co-op. But it's not just farmers who've uh, lost confidence. I think it's fair to also say that a number of dairy companies have lost uh, confidence in talking with each other. And so that's why I say that one of our objectives is to try and get the industry back to where it can work together between farmers and processors. And we have had some, uh, some significant success in doing that over the last six months. At the end of September last year, we brought farmers and processors together to start the process of developing a code of practice on contracts um, to try and get some uh, fairer outcomes in the way contracts are, uh, are negotiated between farmers and processors. I think it's fair to say that we're now close to a penultimate draft on that and anybody who tells you that um, it usually takes a long time to develop such can, uh, codes would say is quite surprised at uh, how quickly we've come to that and I think it's a function of that history of working together. Uh, just two weeks from today, two weeks ago from today, again farmers and processors came together to look at the longer term strategies for this industry, look at what our challenges might be, what our opportunities are and what the structures and what sort of markets are going to be into the future. So again, another example of where we've got back to a lot of the, the capability that we've demonstrated in the past. But just like every other industry, the dairy industry is changing. While we are all in the same shifting landscape of market-driven forces, consumer demands and changing technologies. As dairy farmers, we're eager to drive change while weighing up the risks, and we're eager to be bold while still being realistic about the path forward. For all of us in the industry, that path must be global, it must be diverse, and it must harness all we have at our disposal to become more efficient and more effective in our farming enterprises. Australia's got an open economy, we know. And we, as an dairy industry, are heavily reliant on exports. We depend on international stability and open borders to drive our economic growth. The China-Australia Free Trade Agreement, ratified almost a year ago, is a partnership that has the potential of becoming even stronger. And you've heard a little bit about that already. Our dairy exports to Greater China have increased 46% in the last five years increased 46% over the last five years, making it our largest dairy market export by volume and by value. The first half of 2016 saw the value of our dairy exports double to China. Our biggest, biggest growth has come from milk, condensed milk, infant powder, butter and cheese. Over the last year, our export volumes grew by, to China grew by 29% from around 138,000 tonnes to 178,000 tonnes. While the value of those exports 
increased by about 70% to 800 million Australian dollars. So most of our increase in value is due to the growth of a single ca category, infant formula. Our exports of infant formula have increased from 6,000 to 19 odd thousand tonnes in that, and valued at about $270 million. So China's been a significant value proposition for the Australian dairy industry. But it's not just about China. Our industry's ability to benefit Asian consumers with safe, healthy, reliable sources of quality dairy products is essential for us in the long term. Over the last four decades, Australian dairy has had a long-term focus on Asia. We had no choice in the early 1970s. You'll all recall, and uh, the last, uh, all recall what happened in last year. The other thing that happened last year um, with a certain vote in the UK, it was uh, about uh, 71, 72 when the UK voted to enter the EU or the European Common Market, as it was then known, and Common Community, I think it was. And we lost all of our exports. Australia's dairy industry shrunk in the 1970s. We went from 42-odd thousand dairy farmers in 72 to 22,000 dairy farmers in 82. We dropped from 7.5 billion litres to 5.2 billion litres. So we've been through adversity and we grew our exports to Asia through the 80s and 90s and, uh, and the last couple of decades. And 75% of our exports have been to the Asian markets. So we've got a bit of history in dealing with some of these sorts of issues. Um, although uh, the US president has effectively ended the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the industry, and I'm sure the Australian government too, will do everything it can possibly do to ensure the changes in US trade policy does not adversely impact the gains we've won from our dairy products access to Asia Pacific over the last four decades. Globally, dairy markets are improving as the gap between supply and demand closes, as you've heard. The relaxation of trade restrictions around the world has given us the opportunity to negotiate free trade agreements with markets that were previously closed. However, to take advantage of our trade agreements, we have to do more to address non-tariff trade barriers because even those open markets have got significant non-tariff trade barriers still restricting our capacity to add value to our exports. And as we know, and as we've seen already, markets rise and markets fall, and the only thing that is a constant is a world of change. So just as we've enjoyed technological advances in areas like communication and transport, our scientists have been developing new tools and techniques to develop better options and better opportunities for farmers to improve their productivity. Australian dairy is a leader in agricultural innovation. Our farmers, supported by researchers, industry groups and other stakeholders, remain at the global forefront of invention and adoption of technologies. This enthusiasm for change and innovation has helped Australian dairy farming remain globally competitive. Without it, we wouldn't be in the business. Technological advances in the dairy sector are just another part of the broader boom in innovation across the Australian economy. One such change is the use of genomics, which is an exciting new technology that's now been widely used in Australia. Genomics helps you to breed faster the type of cow you want to milk. By improving the selection of young bulls to progeny test by artificial in, uh, insemination companies, by providing more reliable information on young bulls so that we can be more confident about their capacity to, do, uh, to breed superior daughters, and for new traits like fertility, and selecting superior females at a younger age to breed replacement heifers and to breed replacement and, and the new generation of superior sires. Selecting better cattle is a well-established practice on Australian dairy farms. This has helped make our country a leading milk producer globally. 
Using traditional breeding methods, farmers typically realise around $100 improvement in cow performance per lactation from 10 years of breeding effort. At Dairy Futures CRC, our aim is to double this to $200 per cow over 10 years by enabling farmers to improve their herd twice as fast as they can now through improved bull choices and measuring the genetic merit of calves at birth, influencing the choices that farmers can make for each of their calves, whether to keep, sell or breed. Our technology is already in use in Australian dairy cattle breeding. DNA information is routinely included in every assessment of a bull's merit. In some cases, farmers now purchase bulls solely on their DNA-based assessment. The benefits to farmers include being more confident in their sire selections and making their sire selections much earlier in the animal's life. Our current research aims to accelerate genetic gain by using DNA analysis to search for new bloodlines, both locally and across the world. To do this, we are shifting from an approach that looks for landmarks in the DNA to an assessment of the entire DNA sequence. This is a huge data challenge that drives us to continuously improve our assessment techniques. Genomic technology is also being used to assess traits that are important to farmers but are difficult to improve through conventional breeding methods. These traits include fertility, longevity and resistance to mastitis. We will also open up new opportunities for breeding more profitable cows, such as balancing selection for production with selection for feed intake. Genomic technology is already starting to benefit our dairy farmers. Our research is on track to deliver the biggest gain in herd improvement in more than 30 years. Dairy Futures CRC, delivering practical innovations that create a prosperous future for the Australian dairy industry. 30 years ago, we used to talk about uh, when we can look up the genes of a bull or look up the genes of a cow, we'll know more about which we should use for breeding the next generation. We've now been able to achieve that. Fantastic opportunities. One other thing over that 30 years of collaboration in breeding is to get where we are now, research and development has grown significantly because we're able to rely on multiple industry organisations to provide data, analysis, research, standards and quality assurance. An initiative of Australian Dairy Farmers and Dairy Australia, in particular, and National Herd Improvement Association of Australia, has been the formation of a company called DataGene to further improve the accuracy of our breeding values and expand the opportunities for creating new data sources to improve our productivity. DataGene brings these opportunities together, providing efficiencies to achieve far more than a standalone organisation could do. By building a new data processing centre and a database, DataGene will transform the way the industry collects and uses data for herd improvement and a lot more things but by allowing seamless access to data from multiple sources, getting access to those vet data, data that are held on farms, data that um, farmers have in terms of their, um, their, uh, their, their pasture production, etc. Taking data from a whole lot of different platforms and putting them onto one. Supporting the development of modern user-friendly tools for farmers providing a critical mass of data which will improve the integrity of genetic evaluation systems. Opening opportunities for new breeding values such as health breeding values and broadening the use of data beyond traditional herd improvement to aid the broader dairy businesses and the industry in general. The creation of data gene and the support for the development of a central database is an example of industry recognising data as a strategic priority. Improving utilisation of on-farm data will not only benefit genetic gain, but will enable the industry to understand trends better, perform benchmarking and prioritisation of research and herd development needs and opportunities. By 2030, it's estimated the dairy industry will have an accumulated $265 million in value from improving herds at double the current rate of gain, and a further $185 million from new and improved traits being assessed through genetic evaluation. 
Other technological advances that goes hand in hand with genomics is the work being done by Dairy Bio. Through the use of genetics, Dairy Bio are developing better pastures through genomic selection. In Australia, pastures form the basis for a dairy cow's diet, and pasture performance has a direct impact on a farmer's largest expense and most critical resource, feed. Providing an improved and future-proof feed resource is a key objective at Dairy Futures CRC. By advancing the quality, quantity and persistence of pastures, we aspire to deliver benefits of the order of $500 per hectare per year. Ryegrass is the most common pasture in Australia and New Zealand, and it faces a wide range of different climates, soils and pests. It takes 12 years of intensive effort to produce new cultivar that will prosper across these different environments. Dairy Futures CRC is working to improve how ryegrass is bred, speed up the process of getting a new cultivar to the market, and improve its performance in the field. Technologies under development include novel endophytes, the fungi that live in plants and give unique properties to extend their life. Reselection, refining established ryegrass varieties for traits such as energy yield. Genetic modification, producing lines of ryegrass plants that contain substantially higher levels of energy. New tools for use by plant breeders will complement the new technologies, speeding up plant breeding and helping identify and breed the best plants for dairy pasture. A cultivar map based on DNA markers provides a new way to source novel genetics for breeding new cultivars. Once a new ryegrass cultivar is bred and placed on the map, it will also ensure all batches of seed remain true to type. We are using DNA marker information to assess genetic potential in the plants, particularly for traits that can't readily be measured in the field. This means that specific traits for nutritional value and disease resistance can be targeted for improvement in the breeding program. One of our biggest opportunities is to fit these multiple technologies together to deliver synergies and even more value from our research. Our ultimate goal is to start with the best plants, containing the best endophytes, then apply the best process to achieve superior pastures. We are on track to deliver innovations that reduce the cost of producing milk and stimulate industry growth. Dairy Futures CRC, delivering practical innovations that create a prosperous future for the Australian dairy industry. So these new technologies will re revolutionise the dairy industry. They aren't pipe dreams, they are reality. They'll deliver large scale improvements in the performance of pastures, our herds and our farmers. Through advancements in bioscience and technology and the application of big data, we're creating, I think you can see, a positive future for the Australian dairy industry. It's a, an industry with a strong future. Thank you.